This morning, I received a rather interesting message on the blog. Uh, basically, it was one of those, somebody's wrong on the internet things, except... In this case, I don't think I was quite wrong. Uh, the, the message I got was from somebody who was really adamantly opposed to me calling the euphonium a tenor tuba. Uh, now, here's, here's something. It, this may really irk a lot of brass players. Brass players tend to get very, very persnickety in the nomenclature of their instrument. And this has a very historical basis. It goes back to the late 1800s, or even middle 1800s, when every brass manufacturer was excuse me, trying to come out with their own new invention. And they all put a different name on it. And you see this all over. Sax horns and saxotrombas and sax tubas and sudrophones and antoniophones and Orpheans and all these just weird and bizarre brass instruments with weird and bizarre names. And essentially, they're all copies of one another in different shapes. And to further confuse the matters, there are several different valve systems. You have your standard piston valve, which most Americans know is the standard valve you see on trumpets. You have your rotary valves. That's the standard valve you see on horns. And you've got uh, the Vienna pumping valve, which is a double cylinder valve that's really only used anymore in the Vienna horn. And there's a few more types of valves. And so a lot of people will say, oh, it's got a different valve system. It's a different kind of instrument. And that's really not the case. So what I'd like to do in this video, and this is going to be a much more in-depth video than I normally do, is I want to talk about what is a tuba. So when we think the word tuba, we think the big bass instrument that's we have a row of them in the back of our bands, or there's one in the back of the orchestra. But let's let's dissect the tuba a little bit more and really pare it down to what it fundamentally is. And this is something that's going to stay constant over every size of instrument. It's constant through every type of tuba you'll find. Number one, the tuba is a conical bore instrument. It means it starts small and slowly gets bigger toward the bell. Two, that conical bore is an even taper. Mostly even. Uh, Bore size cannot taper through the valve section because the valves actually have to move. If, if the the bore uh, changed in the valve section, the valves would no longer be able to function. So aside from the valve section, the bore is a steady taper from small to big. Three, the instrument needs to be capable of playing the fundamental pitch. Brass players call this the pedal tone. It's the first note on the harmonic series. Other brass instruments cannot do this. Uh, trumpets notoriously cannot produce the pedal tone. Some can, but it's not really of any musical value. So we've got those three things. Conical bore. That conical bore is an even taper from start to finish and capable of playing the fundamental. One other thing we can add in is the mouthpiece is a deep cup mouthpiece. Deep cup means it, a shallow cup would be kind of like I'm doing here with my hand. A deep cup, it goes in much, much deeper. You take a look at a tuba mouthpiece and the cup of the mouthpiece goes in quite a ways. So if we take a look at those four definitions, we get our fundamental definition of a tuba. The other instrument that falls into this category are bugles. And so essentially, a tuba is a valved bugle. Conical bore, constant taper throughout the instrument, and a cup mouthpiece. The only difference between a tuba and a bugle is tubas have valves. Once valves started getting added to bugles, and we see this in uh, DCI, drum corps, they're tubas. They are essentially tubas. 
the the bewildering assortment of instruments used in the drum corps is going to be beyond the scope of this video, but those do exist. So right now I'd like to go and we'll take a look at the four common sizes of tuba. The first tuba we'll look at is the B-flat tuba. This is sometimes called a contrabass tuba. There are two types of contrabass tuba. We'll look at the other type here in just a moment. Uh, some tuba players will call it a double B-flat tuba or double B-flat contrabass tuba. This is the instrument that is commonly seen in American schools. In fact, it is really the only tuba that American schools will use. It's what we use from beginners through advanced. The second tuba we'll look at is the C tuba. The C tuba is pitched one step higher than the B-flat tuba. This is the instrument that is most commonly used by professionals. It again is a contrabass tuba. The B-flat tuba and the C tuba are the lowest commonly seen members of the tuba family. Next in size, we have the E-flat tuba. This instrument is not seen very commonly in the United States. However, it is a common feature of British brass bands where it, along with the B-flat tuba, formed the bass section. The next tuba is the F tuba. This is the smallest commonly seen tuba that we'll find in the orchestra. It's not commonly seen in band music. This is the instrument used a lot of times by soloists. It's also the original size of tuba, at least in Germany. And the great German works would use the F tuba until Richard Wagner came along and decided he wanted to use the contrabass tuba. Both the E-flat tuba and the F tuba are what we call bass tubas. These are pitched roughly a fourth above the contrabass tuba. As you can see, we've got four common sizes of tuba. And I purposely chose those images. If you go back and look, each tuba is configured differently. The B-flat tuba has four rotary valves. The C tuba has uh, four piston valves and one rotor valve. The E-flat tuba has four compensating valves. And the F tuba has six rotary valves. So all the valve configurations on those four tubas are different. To give a better comparison, I'd now like to take a look at two different B-flat tubas. One is a rotary valve system, and the other is a 3 plus 1 compensating system. The compensating system, as seen here in this Besson tuba, is a complex system whereby the fourth valve operates a secondary set of tubes that allow for proper intonation when the fourth valve is depressed. This system can only be operated on a piston valve instrument. Compare this to our rotary valve instrument. This is a very traditional German style rotary instrument, often called a Kaiser tuba. This is a four valve instrument. However, this instrument is not compensating due to the rotary valves. It also means that this instrument is lacking one semitone at the bottom of its register, namely the low B0. That's the right at the bottom of the piano. This tuba cannot play it, whereas the compensating system can. In order to adjust this, Rotary tubas will often have more than four valves. Five valves is not uncommon. You saw in the F tuba, six valves. Seven valves is even possible as well. Though the compensating system only needs the four valves. As you can see, both of these tubas are B flat tubas. They are contrabass tubas and no one is going to argue that they are fundamentally a different instrument, even though they have fundamentally different valve combinations. That brings me to the crux of this video. I'd like to now take a look at a different instrument. 
A fifth member of the tuba family, the euphonium, also known as the tenor tuba. Take a look at this picture of a euphonium. And you'll notice that it looks just like the compensating valve system on the B flat tuba we just saw. Now take a look at this image of what is commonly called a tenor tuba. And you'll notice that its valve system looks identical to the rotary valve system on the other B flat tuba. Because we don't call the compensating piston B flat tuba and the rotary B flat tuba different instruments, we don't have different names for them, neither should we have a true different name for a euphonium and a tenor tuba. Fundamentally, they are one and the same. Now, this brings a bigger question. Can the definition of tuba be expanded to more instruments than just the five, the B flat contrabass, the C contrabass, the E flat bass, the F bass, and the B flat tenor or euphonium? And the answer is yes. If we take, go back to our early definition, conical bore, even expansion through it, capable of playing the fundamental pitch and a deep cut mouthpiece, we come across another instrument the flugelhorn. The flugelhorn meets every one of these definitions. Take a look at this image of a flugelhorn. And you'll notice you can see every one of those capabilities except the fact that the player can play the fundamental. You can see the conical bore and the even taper throughout it. In fact, the flugelhorn is a much easier visual demonstration of that concept. Furthermore, there are actually several sizes of flugelhorn. Today, we really only know the B-flat flugelhorn, same pitch as the B-flat cornet or the B-flat trumpet. But historically, there also existed an E-flat cornet, which you can see here. If we continue this further, there is one other instrument that will fall into the category. And that's the first piccolo trumpets ever made. They were made by the Mahion Company in Belgium, I believe. Take a look at this image of a Mahion piccolo trumpet. And what you will see is an instrument that meets the characteristics of a tuba. Conical bore throughout, even taper. So the very first piccolo trumpets were actually piccolo tubas. So it is not incorrect to call a flugelhorn a soprano tuba. It's not incorrect to call an E-flat flugelhorn a Sopranino tuba. And it's not incorrect to call the Mahion piccolo trumpet a piccolo tuba. So the tuba family, if we use those original conditions, that definition that I gave you at the beginning, consists of far more instruments than tuba players or euphonium players are ready to admit. It is a very large family. In fact, it may be the largest family in the brass. So I hope this video is at least informative. I know it will raise some hackles among very traditional brass players, but if you break it down to the fundamentals of what a tuba fundamentally is, then you have to accept that the euphonium is a tuba, that the flugelhorn is a tuba, that the early Mahion piccolo trumpets are tubas. If that fundamental definition of conical bore, even taper, deep cup mouthpiece, and capable of playing the fundamental is the definition that we choose for a tuba, which has to be the definition we choose, then all those instruments are in fact tubas. Thanks for watching. Comment below if you have uh, any questions on this. Um, 
If you have, you know, criticism, I'll take that with a grain of salt, of course. But if you have a different definition, I'd like to hear it. But to me, that's the most uh, concise and universally applied definition of what is a tuba. Thanks for watching.